Out of all the men who proclaimed themselves to be king, challenging the Lannisters in the War of the Five Kings, Renly was the only one brazen enough to form his own take on the Kingsguard. The man didn't fight a single battle before he had seven spots filled with young and inexperienced fighters. He called it his Rainbow Guard. And no, this has nothing to do with his sexuality. The author George Martin made it a point to state it had to do with rainbows being a significant symbol on the Faith of the Seven. But I don't know if I'm buying it. It's a little too on the nose if you ask me. It was just the sort of notion that would appeal to Renly Baratheon. A splendid new order of knighthood, with gorgeous new raiment to proclaim it. Even as a boy, Renly loved bright colors and rich fabrics, and he had loved his games as well. Each guard would represent one of the seven colors of the rainbow. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple. I always forget about indigo. While all wearing a rainbow cloak and brightly colored armor. This was vastly different than the original King's Guard that's been established since the Targaryens conquered the Seven Kingdoms 300 years in the past. They all wear white. That's it. Makes Renly look like a kid playing Power Rangers with his friends. And one of these friends are Sir Robert Royce, who occupies the color red within Renly's short-lived Rainbow Guard. We do get to spend a little time with this character throughout the first two books, so he is fleshed out a bit more than some of the others. He's kind of an outlier in comparison to the other six, who either hail from the Stormlands or the Reach, locations where Renly's support is comprised of. House Royce is a very powerful family in the Vale, who didn't take part in the War of the Five Kings. Robar the Red had some renown before he got his name by Renly as a decent tourney fighter. He was one of the sons of Lord Bronze Jan Rice, a fairly notable character. Renly had gifted him with a rainbow cloak and a suit of blood red armor and named him one of his seven. This quote from the second book has Catelyn questioning him about why he isn't with her sister in the Vale. You are a long way from the Vale, sir, she told him, and you are far from Winterfell, my lady. I know what brought me here. But why have you come? This is not your battle, no more than it is mine. I made it my battle when I made Renly my king. The Royces are Bannerman to House Arryn. My lord father owes Lady Lysa fealty, as does his heir. A second son must find glory where he can, Sir Robert shrugged. Man grows wary of tourneys. If you guys remember the very first scene of Game of Thrones and the books, when the White Walkers attacked the Brothers of the Night's Watch, that cocky jerk-off who was leading that small group was Robert Royce's younger brother, Waymar Royce. We should head back to the wall. Do the dead frighten you? Our orders were to track the wildlings. We tracked them. They won't trouble us no more. Get back on your horse. He just recently joined the Night's Watch and was given command because of his high birth. He must have grew tired of being a younger son too and looked elsewhere for purpose. Bryce Karen, or Bryce the Orange, is actually the lord of a powerful house in the Stormlands. The region in the Stormlands where their castle Nightsong is located is known as the Marches. It's the border between this kingdom and Dorne. Their history is a nasty one, full of wars and feuds. This made House Karen have a deep tradition of martial skills. Lord Bryce was no exception. He was a well-known fighter, so it's no surprise he was selected as part of Renly's Rainbow Guard. It didn't take much time to defect to Stannis after Renly's campaign was cut short. He wasn't the only one to do so. A lot of fighters and houses from the Stormlands sided with Stannis after Renly's death, even though moments earlier they were prepared to kill him. They joined Stannis, but none have love for him. He just happened to be the next best thing, or sort of the only option since he is now their liege lord. Aligning with the Lannisters, like their former allies in the Reach, could mean having enemies close to home, putting them and their families in danger. During the Battle of the Blackwater, Bryce is killed by a knight with one eye from the Westerlands in single combat. The Lannisters award this knight with Bryce's castle, lands, and title, but it's in the Stormlands, so good luck making that your new home while in Stannis' territory. Seeing the way Bryce and Robar interact with each other during a feast held for Renly made Catelyn see them just as boys. Bryce was trying to provoke Robar into juggling with some knives, and these are the men that are supposed to protect the king. Cat pitied them because she knew what war does to people, and they didn't. Gaillard Morgan occupies the color green in Renly's Rainbow Guard. During a feast, we learn he's a singer that plays the harp. He sings a song about tying some lions' tails together in a knot. Like Bryce, he comes from a noble house in the Stormlands. These similarities continue because like Bryce, Gaillard the Green is killed at Blackwater after he and his family joined Stannis. To confuse and scare off some of the fighters in Stannis' army, a man dressed in the deceased Renly's armor joined the Tyrell-Lannister alliance. 
hacking away at anyone in his path, including Gaird. This made many believe it was Renly's ghost coming back for revenge against his brother Stannis and the men who joined him. Loras eventually reveals that it was his older brother Garland, a very skilled fighter who put on Renly's easily recognizable armor with his antlered helm. This was all one of Littlefinger's schemes that worked pretty well. Stannis allowed Gaier to lead the vanguard during the battle, something that Renly denied him. Yeah, so far, this royal guard isn't leaving the best impression. Sir Emin Cooey, the Yellow, is one of the seven rainbow guards that come from a house in the Reach. From his minor appearance in the books, I would say he's portrayed as the least skilled fighter here. He was the first to burst into the tent when Renly was killed by the Shadow Assassin and blamed Brienne without even knowing what happened. He ran in screaming, you'll die for this, but only made a fool of himself against the real fighter. Brienne held her own against multiple fighters, but Catelyn convinced Sir Robert Royce, the Red, that she was innocent. Brienne and Cat were able to escape into the night during the chaos. Emin is known to tie her easily after all. Robar was a sensible one, deciding not to immediately attack Brienne without putting the pieces together first. Sir Parmen Crane, aka Parmen the Purple, was also just outside the tent guarding his king. These three rainbow guards, Robar, Emin, and Parmen, were all confronted by their young lord commander Loras Tyrell after he saw the corpse of their king. Loras was never given an official color since he was a lord commander, but Indigo is missing to represent one of the guards, so maybe you can consider him Loras to Indigo, but not really. Loras personally wore his silver armor with jewels decorating it. Even George Martin overlooked this color of the rainbow. The 17-year-old Loras was madly in love with the 21-year-old Renly since he squired for him at Storm's End before he was a knight. Loras completely lost it after seeing his lover's dead body and took it out on the Rainbow Guard who were on duty that night at the tent. Being one of the most skilled fighters in the Seven Kingdoms, Loras was able to kill Robar and Emin in his rage for not defending their king. Parmen, the only one to survive this encounter. Parmen's family, House Crane, is one of the more prominent houses in the Reach. But after Loras' assault, he decides to side with Stannis. But it wouldn't be long for him to be captured by the Tyrells and held captive at High Garden. We haven't heard from him since the third book, and that was just mentioning his capture, so clearly establishing himself to be irrelevant towards the end of the story. It's surprising that no character bothers to mention Loras murdering two innocent men. You kind of feel especially bad for Robert Royce, who proved to be a good-hearted knight, who tried to protect Kat and Brienne from that mob. Emmons' dying words after Loras was through with him was once again accusing Brienne of Renly's murder. Loras is the Tyrell's golden boy, so he would never face any consequences. Instead, he would just move on to protect another king as a member of the King's Guard for Joffrey and then Tommen. While in King's Landing, he would finally come face to face with Brienne. The last of the Northmen had dismounted, Jamie saw, and now Loras Tyrell had seen Brienne. So Loras, she stood stupidly holding her brittle. Loras Tyrell strode toward her. Why, he said. He will tell me why. He treated you kindly, gave you a rainbow cloak. Why would you kill him? I never did. I would have died for him. You will. Sir Loras drew his longsword. Jamie had to stop the fight from happening, but not before saying Brienne would have won. It wouldn't be a Jamie POV chapter without his sly remarks. Loras' thirst for revenge and his grief had to be compromised with having her arrested under the charge of murder. Jamie vouches for her honor and innocence and tells Loras to simply speak with her. After their conversation, Loras comes to his senses. He begins to reflect on what he did in his madness, killing innocent members of his own Rainbow Guard who he was supposed to lead. He thinks about the relationship Brienne had with Renly. I asked him why he kept her close, if he thought her so grotesque. He said that all his other knights wanted things of him, castles or honors or riches, but all that Brienne wanted was to die for him. When I saw him all bloody, with her fled and the three of them unharmed, if she's innocent, then Robar and Emin. He could not seem to say the words. Brienne was never a knight, simply because she was a woman. She is a lady, however, being the daughter of Lord Selwyn Tarth. She makes it into the ranks of the Rainbow Guard by requesting to fill the final vacant spot after winning Attorney Melee. In the midst of Renly's war campaign, he stops everything he was doing to throw Attorney. This wasn't even to fill that final Rainbow Guard spot, it was just to have a good time. Callan was right to call them all Knights of Summer when winter is coming. This is madness, Callan thought. Real enemies on every side and half the realm in flames. And Renly sits here playing at war like a boy with his first wooden sword. Renly was actually holding that final blue spot for Sir Barristan Selmy, 
in hopes he was going to join his cause after being dismissed by Joffrey. Barristan is a very well-respected knight who many look up to as a hero. He would inspire Renly's forces, but we all know he was off to Essos to find Daenerys. This sort of saddened Renly because Barristan by his side would validate your claim. But Renly honors Brienne of Tarth's wishes after she defeats 115 skilled fighters in the melee, including a final fight with Loras. She swears an oath to protect him, and he cloaks her in a rainbow cape, naming her Brienne the Blue, a title that would last, like what, a few days at most? Brienne was already accustomed to wearing blue armor, so this name does fit. She also happens to be from the Sapphire Isle, and is known to have remarkably blue, beautiful eyes, despite how ugly she's written to be. Some of the other members of the Rainbow Guard match their armor with their title to really add to this theme. None of this bunch left much of an impression. Well, aside from the Lord Commander Loris, and Brienne, of course. They were all in over their heads, including their foolish King Renly. He was only seeking glory, so he deserved an elite guard that only cared for the same. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Oh, and even if the captured Parmen the Purple is mentioned in upcoming books, I don't think it'll be important enough to talk about. But as a collective, the Rainbow Guard was a fun little moment. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see y'all soon.